Hello and welcome to our busy webinar and SCORE webinar today on your social now what on behalf of SCORE, BusyWeb, and Constant Contact. If you're familiar with SCORE, it's the Society of, um, no, Service Corps of Retired Executives, and it's a international organization or a national organization that supplies support for new businesses. If you haven't already spoken with your local SCORE representative, please do so because there's a lot of free, uh, free resources available to you at any time, including one-on-one -on -one coaching, email coaching, phone coaching, or just stipulations and connections on how to grow your new business. I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb, and here's a little bit about me. If you have any questions and would like to talk either during or after this event, you can reach me at any of the following places, Dave at BusyWeb.com, um, you can hit us at facebook.com slash busyweb, tweet us at busyweb, or you can reach us at 612-4-BUSY-O at 612-424-9990. This is on behalf of SCORE, of course, but also Constant Contact. Constant Contact is a email marketing and online marketing tool that gives you an all-in-one marketing kit that will help you grow your business and it's very inexpensive at starting at $45 a month for a kit that includes social media marketing, surveys, events and registrations, and of course, email marketing. A little bit of detail about who BusyWeb is. We've been, we were founded in 99. We're based in Champlin, Minnesota. That's just a little bit north of Minneapolis. And we have a team of 14 and clients all over the world. Here's a couple of pictures of our hive. And um, we do fantastic work, we like to think. And one of the things that we most specialize in is building online marketing tools that help our clients grow their businesses. Clients like Quick Keys, Short and Miller, Virtual Office Centers, 91 Degrees have all enjoyed beautiful websites that then seamlessly integrate with online marketing. So if you're interested or need help with online marketing, we'd love to talk to you very soon. And you'll see some notes and a little bit about how all of that works. Now this is intended to be an interactive webinar, so I'm going to switch gears for just one moment and drive you over to more details about how all of this stuff works, and then we'll get into our agenda for the day. Um, if you're familiar with Constant Contact, of course, here's a little bit more detail on that. And then I'm going to switch screens here for a second. And if you are live on the event today, um, there's a few ways that you can interact with us. So if you're on this page and you're watching the video inside of this page on the BusyWeb website, which you received from an email, you can view the actual Hangouts or the link um, by clicking on this Google Plus link under number one above. When you do that, it's going to take you to a new page. And inside of that page, you'll be able to see it says Q&A and Live. And that Q&A means that you can ask us questions during this event as well. So if you go inside of here and you click this play button, then it's going to open up a new window. And then you'll be able to ask questions through this window. So there's a big green button in the lower right of your screen. If you click that big green button, you can ask a question here. Inside of that, we'll be able to uh, take those questions. I'll get to them as much as I can. Um, we'll track the questions. If we don't get to all of them, I'll get a hold of you afterwards. Or again, you can reach me at any of those contact bits um, that we included at the beginning. Easiest is probably just Dave at BusyWeb.com, um, but would love to answer your questions and help you with your online marketing any way we can. All right, so let's get into the agenda for today's meeting. What we're going to talk about today is, is social media right for your business? How to create great content? how others are using the big five networks, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Pinterest, and more. And then we'll talk about some next steps, including general etiquette and how, should, how you would know if social media is working for you. Again, for those that are just joining, this is Social Media 102 on behalf of SCORE, BusyWeb, and Constant Contact. And I am Dave Meyer. You can reach us at the contact information at the bottom and would love to help you out or reach out as much as possible. Let's get into our content for the day and talk about Facebook first. Well, if you've been through our Social Media 101 courses, or even if you haven't, you can preview those by going to busyweb.com slash events and going back through our uh, events calendar. But if you've used Facebook, you know that it's really the granddaddy, the big kahuna in social media with 
over 900 million people visiting Facebook in a single day recently, it's continuing to pick up steam. It's estimated that they have 1.5 billion users. As a matter of fact, um, there's statistics out there that say that there's more people on Facebook than own a toothbrush in the world. So probably a good thing that we get to Facebook them and not talk to them face to face. All right, so is social media or Facebook right for your business? Well, B2Cs think so. 89% of businesses that serve customers are, going, are using Facebook. 81% of business to business companies are using Facebook. And 91% of nonprofits are using Facebook in their marketing. And if you've heard of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge or other nonprofit type um, driving like that, there's a lot of really cool stuff that's available. And if you use Facebook in particular, and if you have something interesting and fun to share, you can really get a lot of traction quickly on socially based posts. So social meaning social issues based posts and details, because it's easy to reach out and find the right types of customers. So you may ask, is Facebook right for your business? Well, if first you have the resources to promote and publish things on Facebook, meaning time and staff, Facebook is probably going to be good for you. More importantly, probably if you have content to share, we'll share with you a little bit about what to share and how to share it in a moment. But if you really do need to be found and need to reach out and connect with people, having a Facebook business page is very important for you and your business. So one of the keys that you'll note here is especially inside of the online marketing world, Facebook is probably the catch-all for marketing. So if you're not sure if you should be doing online marketing, Facebook is probably your best bet because about 40% um, of everyone online has an account on Facebook. So as you look at that, there's just a lot of opportunity inside of Facebook, whether you're B2B, B2C, nonprofit, or just a solo practitioner trying to get up and on your feet. Facebook is a great way to spend your time going to facebook.com slash page pages and setting up a new page for your company is a great way to get out there for free and to start targeting and connecting with people. Facebook content should be relatively low volume and high value. What that means is you're not gonna publish quite as often as you might on some other networks, and we'll cover those other networks, of course, in a moment. But at a minimum, you'd probably wanna be posting about three times a week, maybe a maximum of 10 times a week, or twice a day, business day, on Facebook. The focus that you wanna to get to is quality versus quantity. So when you look at Facebook posts, imagery is very important. Videos can be very powerful on Facebook, although you have to be careful with the format of those videos. You have to make sure videos that auto play in your mobile stream in particular are engaging right from the start and have some reason or give people some sort of uh, visual excitement to make them want to click on that video to hear it and to get it into a bigger window. Because if you have a beautiful video with a fade from black that takes five seconds and you have James Earl Jones talking in the background, um, it's really not going to engage people at all. All they're going to see is a black box as they're scrolling through their timeline to get to the next stuff. For content best practices, as in everything in online marketing, there are ratios that you should be concerned with. About half of what you do should be designed to get likes, shares, and comments. That's the engage part of connecting with people. So you want to entertain folks, invite conversation, ask questions, post images and video. We'll share a couple of examples of these in a moment. The other 30% that you want to do or the next 30% is to be useful and informative. So you want to show that you have a depth of knowledge as well as being interesting and engaging. So there's engage and then there's inform and inform is the second 30%. And then finally, that last 20% should be information about your business. And specifically, this is really calls to action, not necessarily buy now calls to action. So you don't want to just post tips and offers and buy now and special closeout deal or any of that stuff. Um, there are certainly times for that. 
it should almost feel like a foregone conclusion and that people are banging down your door saying, let me buy, let me buy, let me buy. And then you say, okay, well, here's, here's your opportunity. So if you're out there and if you're connecting and reaching people in a, in a realistic and engaging way, um, it's just a great way to use Facebook in particular, but all social media. And that's a great way to mix it up. So as you look at this again, half of what you do should be engaging. 30% of what you do should be informative, more of the detail kind of content, the depth, and then tell people what to do with that last 20%. I'm going to skip over, just make sure we're having no problems on the, on the sides here. If you do have questions or notes, go ahead and click that Ask a New Question button down in the lower right. You'll need to be logged in with a Google ID in order to do that, but um, we intend to keep this as useful and informative as possible. So if you do have questions about any of the networks we're going to cover or a specific strategy, let us know and we'll cover that during the webinar. All right, don't see anything big here, so I'm going to move into the content types that you might want to consider on Facebook in particular. So you might want to try fill in the blank kind of content. You tell us what I don't understand about Pinterest is, and then you let people fill in. Or you might try posing questions. Question, what would you call this functionality? Account owners can create, yada, 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 and you give them A, B, C, or D. Just let people answer, and then they might actually connect in and answer or ask more questions. And then finally, a fun factor tip might be a good way to use text updates. Like it or love it, 67% of all new jobs come from small businesses. So that's text updates, but really the powerful and most engaging, the best edge rank types of posts on Facebook are visual. So think about photos, two of our biggest offices, so post up pictures of people, videos, again, making sure that you have something engaging and, in, and designed to get people to click on that video right at the very beginning of that video because when you're scrolling in a mobile device in particular, you're not going to see anything on the video except for those first few seconds and you're definitely not going to hear anything unless you physically click on that video. This is a particular problem <coughs> with YouTube embedded videos. They don't auto play um, on, as a general rule. Sometimes you'll get lucky, but if you embed via the tools directly from Facebook into video, um, generally that autoplay works quite a bit better. And then finally, digital content. So pictures, images. If you're taking notes at home, this might be a good time to write this down. Some EE cards is a great way to come up with digital graphics. Um, tends to be tongue in cheek and includes um, old timey clip art that you can then add text over the top of to do whatever you want. Or Canva, C-A-N-V-A, is another free tool that allows you to basically put pretty graphics over the top of pictures or text to make things more engaging. So this was probably a Canva tool. They just wrote out email blast in a chalkboardy kind of font, put it on a chalkboardy kind of background, and then they just talked about it. So simple and easy. But visual is really one of the power tips inside of Facebook marketing in particular. The more visual you can be, the higher the likelihood that people will see it share it, click on it, and that it'll show up higher in other people's feeds. So let's look at the content and a content exercise. If you are on a Windows machine and you want to take snapshots of any of this data, use the Alt and the Print Screen button to copy the, uh, the contents of your screen right now. And then <coughs> you can go into a Word document or something else and simply paste to save it. If you're on a Mac, you can do Command Shift 4 and you'll get a little crosshairs and you can take a screenshot. Or of course, you can grab your phone and just take a picture of this if you wanna use it later. If you also send an email to dave at busyweb.com, I will send you just the tips included in here and the Facebook and other content exercises. So don't feel like you have to scribble these down madly. Um, for Facebook, again, 50% should be to get likes, shares, and comments, 30% is useful and informative, and 20% should be about your business. So what you may wanna consider, inside of these six at least, is maybe post a fill in the blank, then a question, post a photo or two, and then link to a tip, stat, or fact, include a link to a blog post, and then do a sale, event, or product and service info. One thing that I'll cover just very briefly here, is that it is possible 
to manage all of your social accounts from your website. BusyWeb, we create websites that automatically integrate and auto post to all of the social networks. So if you do a blog post or a, a news update on your website, that post will automatically go out on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, and more. And so if you want to work smarter and not harder, that's a great way to get more content out to as many places as possible while also increasing your search engine optimization rankings or your SEO by having five individual links back to that piece of content for your website. It's certainly possible to post to multiple networks with other tools like Hootsuite, but if you've used Hootsuite before, you know that they have link shortening and that ow.ly link gives Hootsuite better search engine optimization, but it doesn't help you. So as we move forward, again, this is your content tip for Facebook. Another thing that you wanna be concerned about and think about when you're creating um, or when you're working with Facebook is you do wanna take time to create an editorial calendar really across all your networks, but certainly on Facebook. So as you, as you think about this, plan weekly and figure out what you're going to post. If you have a blog first strategy, you might wanna post at least one thing every week and make sure that those blog posts are cross posted across all of your social networks. But think about what you wanna do. So leave a little bit of time and a little bit of space for all of the different things that were on that last page. Be always, always leave one or two posts open for something that comes up and be careful so that you actually are being relevant and interesting when you make those posts. Here's how, Bol how Boloco is using Facebook. They ask a bunch of questions. They share multimedia. So there's a YouTube video that's embedded on there. They're helpful with their content, so they're posting globally inspired specials on here. So this is something that other folks or their, their fans typically want. And then they also take time to involve fans So what do you do next with Facebook? Well, there's a few things. First, go ahead and try a fill in the blank question or post, and then create some visual content to share. I mentioned Canva, and I also mentioned some EE cards. You could also use PhotoPin for engaging content. Um, and then of course, when you get that content out there, make sure that you're monitoring it. Facebook Insights is incredibly powerful and an easy way to reach out and engage. If you wanna know exactly how to specifically target different types of people, you can get very, very granular, especially inside of Facebook. And I had a webinar about three weeks ago on how to use the Facebook advertising tool to specifically pick and then target an incredibly narrow field, all the way down to specific regions, sex, the type of people, how old they are, if they're originally from a specific location, any of their hobbies you can target, what they focus on most, if they're interested in specific types of things, you can drill right down and reach exactly those people with proper messaging. And if you're just trying to figure out how big your market is, again, with 40 to 60% of people, depending on who you talk to, on Facebook, it's a great way to just kind of gauge how big your market is using Facebook's analytics tools. So I'm gonna switch over and just give one more chance here for people to ask questions. I don't see any questions on here. If you do have one, again, going into the page from the post that you received the link to, and then clicking on this Google Plus link, will open up a window that you'll click play on to get to this page, and then you can click, and ask, click on green for ask a new question. All right, so I'm going to keep going and we'll talk about Twitter. Twitter has about 100, 150 million people on it. It's not quite as active, but certainly you see hashtags everywhere, and it's very big for social content. And so if you have a lot to share, Twitter can be right for you. About 80% of businesses that do business with consumers use Twitter. About 85% of B2Bs use Twitter, and about 69% of nonprofits are using Twitter on a regular basis. And if it's right for your business, then you'll have the resources, time and staff, of course. You need to do content creation and curation. We'll talk about the differences in a moment. But then you also need to monitor 
on Twitter. You know, people are going to be tweeting at you if you're at all successful or interesting on Twitter. And if you want to be a thought leader, or if you are, of course, Twitter could be a great place for you. The key thing is with Twitter, you're going to post a lot. It's high volume and right, kind of low value. I mean, you only get 140 characters, so you can't do too much inside of those tweets. But you might want to consider five times a day as a start, up to a maximum of none as far as your Twitter. If you follow Guy Kawasaki, um, he's the former brand evangelist for the Macintosh computer, and he's a venture capitalist, has written a bunch of books about new business startups and how to do things. One of my favorites is The Art of the Start. Um, he posts several dozen times a day. And the key thing and what to remember is, if you're posting on Twitter, you're posting into a timeline, a river of information. And so if your visitor or your reader happens to be clicking around at a specific time, they might see you. But if they check in five minutes later, they might not. Quantity is really the key with Twitter because you're trying to fill that basket up and broadcast as much as possible so that you can reach as many people as possible. For content best practices, again, you're going to want to create and curate. Creating is publishing content. So maybe a link to your blog post, content that you've thought of, witty, witty tips, tricks, something that's interesting. And then there's also curating, which is grabbing things from other places, adding your commentary, your individual value on top of it, but then really connecting out and linking to other places. Retweeting is really sharing the love around. So if you find a connection somewhere, again, you want to give a little bit of context to why you're sharing this content. But retweeting is simply there's a little button right on Twitter, and you can just share someone else's tweet to the people that follow you. And so retweeting is a great way to take other people's brilliance and share it with the people that follow you. Um, hashtags are great to connect on, on specific issues and items. And let's talk about hashtags for a minute because I think it's kind of confusing and interesting. So on hashtags, there's really a bunch of things that people get misconstrued. First, they think that hashtags are kind of complicated or that there's some sort of a method to the madness. Really, hashtags are used across a lot of social networks. You can do hashtags in Facebook and Instagram um, to, to a smaller extent on LinkedIn, but the idea of using a pound symbol and then some code after it is not unique to Twitter, although Twitter pioneered it and it's really the biggest place for hashtagging. So you'll see this on late Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. You'll see this all over on all kinds of TV shows. Um, some of the reality shows are doing voting via hashtags now. It's just a pound symbol with some unique code immediately after it. What it's useful for is really to connect and let people search and add to conversation around a specific topic. And so if you have a conference that you're running or that you're part of, Having a hashtag for that conference lets other lets everyone that's at the conference discuss with other people what they think or their in, or their insights. One of my favorite things to do when I'm at a conference is to follow the conference hashtag and watch the chatter around specific things that are happening in breakout sessions. And then if I find that one breakout session is just tearing it up and I'm stuck in a snooze fest, I can uh, let my sneakers do the voting and walk to that other event. Um, it's really interesting and it's really easy. And it's also easy for you to share your thoughts on things that may be trending. To create a hashtag, you simply do a pound sign and then pick some code. I would encourage you to search for your hashtag of choice before you decide to use it because someone else may be using that hashtag and that would create confusion. And it might not be something that you're entirely in agreement with because a lot of people do a lot of crazy things over, con over um, hashtags. And so you might find that your seemingly harmless hashtag might have a lot of people talking about a lot of pretty out there things and you might not want to dial into that. It's possible to do too much hashtagging. I would say that, you know, 265 motivating hashtag quotes for hashtag small business owners. Um, 
that's kind of a little out there, I would specifically try to do hashtags for things that people would want to search for. So people get confused about this all the time and they start doing cutesy little hashtags like hashtag Mondays suck, hashtag whatever, hashtag feeling silly, hashtag whatever. Um, all of that is kind of just wasting your text, wasting your tweet. And so if you're going to use a hashtag, make sure that you're using it because you want other people to be able to search for that content, not just because you're trying to be cutesy or funny. As a worthwhile exercise, do the hashtag symbol with your hands. You know, Take your index and middle fingers and hold them at 90 degrees and hold them up in front of you. That's the international hashtag symbol. If your arms get tired when you read in your own tweets when you do that, so 265, hashtag motivated, hashtag quotes, hashtag four, hashtag small business, hashtag owners, you would get tired, don't do it. Keep it to two or three hashtags per tweet, ideally less than that, and make sure that you're connecting and really engaging with people and trying to add to conversations. So let's talk about types of content on Twitter. First, it's mostly text updates on Twitter. You can post with a link on things. Note that this is an ow.ly tweet inside of here from Constant Contact. That's using Owly, that's using Hootsuite. That Owly link is helping Hootsuite with their SEO, but it's not helping you and your business. So I would much rather see busyweb.com slash your content instead of some other third-party service. Um, stats, facts, or tips. Facebook is leading among all the social websites with 82% of small businesses registered. Would you have guessed it's followed by YouTube? That's interesting. That's interesting and informative. And then quotes. You may be disappointed if you fail, but you're doomed if you don't try. Quotes are interesting. People use quotes quite a bit because they can't think of anything original to say on their own. Don't be a one-trick pony and go through your quote of the day book and just publish something every day and think that you're going to accomplish much. Anyone can search for quotes. Be interesting, be original, and if you're going to list a quote, make sure that it directly relates to who you are to your clients and the types of information that they need. So if you're a baker, post a baking related quote. If you're in online marketing, post something that directly relates to online marketing. If you're a business coach, do something interesting, informative, inspirational, but keep it in line with what you do. You might, tr you might wanna inject a little bit of humor, that's certainly fine, but be aware that humor is very subjective and something that you might find just hilarious might offend the heck out of somebody else. With Twitter, you can also do visual updates. You can post links to photos. This is usually done over the online Twitter or over the mobile application for Twitter. Um, it's a lot of the mobile apps, whether it be the official Twitter or TweetDeck or Hootsuite or um, RoboTweet or any of those other places, they all do images and it posts the tweet or the tweet image right in line inside of your content. And as a matter of fact, if you look at your profile on Twitter or profile, for example, on BusyWeb, you'll see a bunch of the pictures that we've added to our tweets. So images are possible and it's a great way to stand out a little bit in your timeline. Videos are also possible. You can use Vine, which is this one. You can see it's vine.co. Twitter owns Vine. It's a six second video that loops. And so it's a great way to be kind of funny and interesting and informative and get right to the point with a simple little video. You can do longer things by linking into different types of content. Vine is very tightly integrated with Twitter and so works pretty well for that. They can also do graphics. And so, you know, this is probably uh, some EE cards or something else that somebody put together. Actually, this is probably Canva by looking at it. But interesting content that, the, that you've posted from somewhere else makes it very easy. Note that it's kind of a junky little text, but inside of the actual tweet timeline, it shows that image, it shows that graphic. So for Twitter as a content exercise, tweet at least five times a day if you're feeling crazy. Four tweets, leave one open for something that happens during the day. Again, this is if you are straight up crazy serious about Twitter. All of these social networks, I would encourage you to do something at least once a week. When people are reviewing your timeline, you don't want it to look like your content or you're not, or that your content has gone stale or that you're not paying attention anymore. 
BusyWeb posts probably three or four things a week to each of our social networks. Um, but that's is what we do. So, you know, I'm okay with, with doing and being pretty active. And so are our followers and fans. Our numbers keep rising because we try to keep as informative and interesting as possible. So think about some planned things. You know, if you're going to pick five, maybe one is going to be a link to a blog post, created or curated. Do a question, do a photo, try a tip, stat, or a fact. And then do something new you discovered or saw today. Post some sort of a observation on something that's interesting in the market. You are uniquely dialed into your industry, certainly more than your customers. So share some of that expertise and reach out and really engage with people on a dedicated and interesting way. How some other folks are doing it, the Courier Museum of Art has a nice, great uh, Twitter, Twitter um, background, and they've got an interesting icon. Key thing on all of these accounts is you want to have a square icon. If your logo is very horizontal, you're going to want to talk to a designer to help you redesign something smaller. If you've seen BusyWeb's logos, our logo for our company is rather horizontal because it says BusyWeb on top of it. But for all of our social networks, we simply use Buzz, our mascot. And so um, it's a great way to just kind of keep things fresh. The key thing is that you want to make sure that people can recognize you graphically in that itty bitty timeline as they're scrolling up and down on their Twitter client, either on their computer or on their mobile device. Thumbnail is truly probably being generous as far as how much space you get. And so making it very prominent is going to be helpful. The Curio Museum of Art posts news and events. They share fun facts, they retweet other people, and they curate content. So you've seen all of this, you know what you need to do. Here's what to do next. First, tweet five times a day. You know, again, if you know that you're not going to be able to tweet five times a day, just be consistent with whatever you do. I would encourage you to start at at least once a week, but be consistent. If you're going to do it, sign on to it for life. And so if you know that you're not eventually going to keep up with five times a day, just stick to once a week and be consistent with that. You don't want to burn out on any given social network. And if you do it too much, it's going to be too high of a bar for you to go back to it day after day after day. So make sure that it's achievable with whatever goal you set. You can share some curated content and then retweet or thank a follower. People are going to follow you. One of the things and one of the best ways to grow your reach in Twitter is to follow as many people as you can because when you follow someone they get a nice message and it encourages them to follow you back. Um, don't just follow all kinds of people willy-nilly. Make sure that they actually relate to you and your business. When you sign up for Twitter it'll actually guide you through. It'll go through your contacts and match up any email addresses that have Twitter accounts and suggest users. It's a great way to start with an initial list but then also just start searching for your industry for some keywords, for some hashtags that you know people are talking about, and then follow as much as you can comfortably to get out and share. <clears throat> All right, so thus endeth our Twitter integration here. Want to make sure we don't have any questions. Looks like we're still good. We have a lot of, a lot of viewers here, so if you're interested in having questions answered, don't be shy. I'll be able to answer those questions during the event here. All right, let's talk about LinkedIn. This is the corporate network. Is it right for your business? Well, B2Cs think so about 71% 70, of the time. If you are a business that does business with consumers, direct to market kind of stuff, you know, maybe you'll be using LinkedIn. 91% of B2Bs use LinkedIn, which makes a lot of sense because LinkedIn is all about connecting with other professionals. And then nonprofits, about 53% use LinkedIn. And that's kind of a shame because that's one of the great ways that nonprofits can get access to higher powered folks that have time, expertise, and perhaps a little bit of free time to help generate real results for their nonprofits. Is uh, LinkedIn right for your business? If you're a B2B, for sure. If you want to be a thought leader, again, great idea. And then on content, if you want to post on LinkedIn, it's kind of like Facebook this way, low volume and high value. I would say it's much more so high value than anything else that we're going to talk about today. When you post something, you want to make sure that it rocks on LinkedIn. It's possible to auto post to your company page. We talk about company pages and what the deal is in Social Media 101. You can scroll back through busyweb.com events 
to check out that 101 event. But the key thing is that you want to focus on your company page and having a great connection and a great set of content that's going to drive and engage people to want to do business with you, especially if you're a B2B. I do maybe two times a week to five times a week on LinkedIn. Again, at a very absolute minimum, post something once a week. And then the content that you're posting here is more formal and technical. You know, let me talk about this a little bit more on pages versus profiles. You know, the difference between a page and a profile, you know, here's a business page. So if you go to linkedin.com slash company, you're going to be presented with the opportunity to create a business page for your company. What it does is it lets you get content out there in a searchable format and it keeps a central location for everybody that's in your business. A personal profile looks like this and it's just you. And so you'll note that for Kristen here, she's at Constant Contact and when you look at her account, it says that she's at Constant Contact. If you have a business page, when you click this Constant Contact, it takes them to the business page for that company, which is a great way to find out more information for people that have great teams. Make sure that you do fill out all the information on your personal profile, and of course, add content to the company culture, your products and services, and get recommendations and give recommendations as much as possible. Note that we don't really talk about endorsements here. Endorsements are simply simply good ways to say if somebody knows about something. So you might find me on LinkedIn and it'll ask you, you know, does Dave know about? Inside of that, that's interesting and helpful, but a recommendation goes a lot, lot further. It lets you specifically talk about things that that person is great at. And LinkedIn is very good about when you receive or when you send out a recommendation, it's kind of pesky about saying, why don't you return the favor and give this person a recommendation as well. So it's a great way to grow a good amount of recommendations. Go for the people that you know best and that would be most likely to give you a good recommendation and then make sure that you give them a recommendation as well. As far as content types, you know, some of this stuff is going to be about you, whether it's product updates, behind the scenes information, you know, kind of show what, what a day in the life is like inside of your business, maybe recruiting information. LinkedIn allows you to publish things and, and posts that might be career related. You can also very easily advertise your, your posts on LinkedIn and it's got a very nice engine if you're trying to reach specific types of people. You also are going to want to do useful information like blog posts, post links to guides and ebooks, downloads, and then post industry news. You know, on LinkedIn, it's very easy to publish and create great content. Um, you can publish to your company page directly from your website if you set it up correctly. And then there's a tool that's relatively new on LinkedIn called the publishing platform. And it's basically blogging uniquely inside of LinkedIn. And that's one of the best ways to really get great engage engagement. It has to be done through your personal profile, but if you want to reach specific people and connect out with them, that's a great way to do it. One side note, if you are a business that's primarily B2B or that primarily doesn't work with professionals and you don't think LinkedIn might be for you, you kind of got to think about what the referral stream is for your business. For example, BusyWeb works quite a bit with folks in the construction industry who you wouldn't think would need anybody in on LinkedIn. However, when they're trying to hire new people, they need to find kids that are interested in joining and usually a lot of high school guidance counselors are the ones to make those recommendations. Well, high school guidance counselors are all on LinkedIn. So make those connections, share that out, Give them some notes and some information. Tell them that you're looking for great people, and maybe you'll get that recommendation that will turn into your next rock star employee. For LinkedIn content exercise, again, share content that's about you and post something useful for your audience. So, you know, something about you might be a product update, the behind the scenes stuff, or a recruiting note, and then useful information includes blog posts, guides, ebooks, industry news, all that kind of stuff. So go ahead and publish that up. 
Market Me Suite is actually a tool um, owned by Constant Contacts. So they're doing some great things on LinkedIn. They ask fun questions. They share multimedia. In this case, they're connecting up with Pinterest and using a Pinterest guide. Um, they're helpful and informative, and they give a lot of information. So what do you want to do next? First, fill out everything on your page, and then create a company page for your company if you don't have one. Be active. You know, Get on there uh, really at least once a week, but ideally about twice a week. And then try sharing something about your industry. Your goal is to be a thought leader inside of LinkedIn. You want to be the person that everyone goes to whenever they're thinking about what you do. So if you want to, if you want to know about online marketing or you, if, if you want anything in online marketing, you should be thinking of Dave and BusyWeb. And LinkedIn needs to drive that type of content that proves why I'm good and why BusyWeb is awesome at what we do. Okay, kicking into Google Plus, I'm just gonna switch over for questions. I'm gonna click right on back, and let's talk about probably the least understood social network. Is it right for your business? Yeah, about half of B2Cs use Google Plus, same thing for B2Bs, and 23% use Google Plus for nonprofits. And that's a shame because Google Plus is fantastic if you're a content creator, if you have the time, and more specifically, if you want better SEO value. By that I mean, if you want to rank higher on Google, getting in with Google and posting on their content, on their content network, is a great and very smart way to help influence your page rank. Let's talk about SEO a little bit. Google uses an algorithm to provide great content and their goal and their entire business model is being as useful as possible in connecting people with what they're looking for. That algorithm depends on a bunch of different things, but one of the big things that you need to have is fresh content that's published regularly using the correct keywords that match what your clients would be searching for if they were in a position to search or to make a purchase decision with you. Key thing is to use those keywords, and of course, Google really loves their own tool. Anytime you link from Google Plus to your website, Google calls that a spark, and sparks are tremendous value indicators for the freshness and interestingness of content, and so Google ranks those very, very highly. For Google Plus content, you know, medium volume, high value, minimum three times a week, maybe up to a max of 10 but use lots of keywords for searchability because again, it's more of a search engine play on Google Plus than anything else. There are some amazing tools that are included in Google Plus and most interestingly and most recently, the Hangout tool, which is what you're watching right now, is brilliant. Really, Google is changing up this tool. I don't know if Google Plus pages will be around forever, but the idea of streams, photos, and then Hangouts, meaning chat and video, are probably going to be the legacy things that stay forward in Google+. Great tool, very easy to use, and very, very effective for search engines. So on content, you know, you might want to try blog posts, events, industry news. Again, if you are using your website and if you're doing things correctly, everything that you publish on your website should be getting automatically cross-posted to Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, and more. So if you're doing that, if you've got a nice round strategy and a great editorial calendar of the types of content that you're publishing, Google Plus will probably go further than most in getting you ranked better for the keywords that you're featuring in your articles. Multimedia includes photos, videos, and e-graphics or publications. Google Plus had some really amazing tools on it, including Auto Awesome that automatically fixes your images, Google Photos, now lets you load all of your imagery. It has unlimited photos that you can publish up on your Google Photos account. And so you can use all of that stuff very simply and easily. And Google's really going a long way in making things usable, easy, and they're cheap, as in free for most. So for Google, you know, posting at least three times a week and publishing things across everything is a great idea. Post something useful in some multimedia, so maybe a blog post, a link in some context on industry news, 
and then maybe a photo or a video. Geek Girl is using Google Plus quite a bit, as is BusyWeb. Um, they provide industry news, they post events, they share photos, and then they use humor as well. I love this. How to tell if your cat's fully charged? Yep, all good. You notice slide two, the eyeballs are glowing. So what to do next? Share your blog posts, post a photo or a video, and with everything that you publish, use keywords that will get you found for what your most important or what your most important search terms are. So, go to stop again. Just make sure that we don't have any questions. Is it best? Oh, sound lost. So, Deb, if you had a problem with with sound for a moment, I apologize on that. Just uh, you can scroll back because we don't we don't have any reports internally here on any problems. Um, Deb says, is it best to post on the company page or your page for search results? And for Google Plus in particular. Posting on your company page is probably going to be the best. As well, for all of the networks that we've talked about so far today, really focusing on the company page is the smartest bet. If you post something on your personal Facebook, Google doesn't catalog personal Facebook posts, but they do search and scan all Facebook pages. Same thing for LinkedIn pages. LinkedIn company pages are publicly searched and, and crawled by Google, whereas personal profiles are not. So if you want to get found online, publishing to your company page is the best option. Now I did mention that blog posting tool on LinkedIn, and that's done through your personal profile, but that's more to connect with direct people versus getting you found. So it's a little bit of a mix. I hope that was helpful, and thank you, Deb, for that question. Oh, and I heard that, and I see that you said LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is where you want to go. So I would again say LinkedIn is you want to have everything on your company page and then do some additional content to your specific connections over your personal profile. So I hope that helps. Thank you very much, Deb, for that question. Okay, let's get into Pinterest. Pinterest is fantastic for businesses and we're seeing a lot of folks using Pinterest. 53% um, of businesses use Pinterest in B2C. 34% use Pinterest in B2B and 24% use it in nonprofits. The key thing in Pinterest is that it needs to be very, very visual. I did a Pinterest busy webinar yesterday, as a matter of fact, and so if you're interested in that, just go to busyweb.com slash events and click on yesterday's event. You'll get all the information you want to know about how to use Pinterest for your business. However, if you have products to sell that are visual, Pinterest is likely good for your business. If you've heard of Etsy, E-T-S-Y, the entire organization, that entire company was launched on the backbone of Pinterest. If you have images to share, and if you want to build awareness of your brand, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do on Pinterest. If you want to reach primarily women, about 84, 85% of the people on Pinterest as of September this year are still women on Pinterest. Um, about 40% of all of the women online in the US are on Pinterest. So if you want to reach that market in particular, but if you have visual content that you want to reshare, 13% of all men online are on, on Pinterest as well. With content on Pinterest, high volume and high value, you can pin away all day, but it should be good stuff. Minimum five times a day, maximum 10 times a day. Again, the real minimum for you if you're going to be on Pinterest is once a week. Quality images is very important as far as Pinterest because that's the barometer and that's what you're using. It's videos and imagery, but visual content is very important because 90% of the information transmitted to your brain is visual. And as we mentioned before on the Facebook posts and Twitter actually, photos are liked twice as much as text updates and 67% of folks say images are very important when selecting and purchasing a product. So if you have a visual medium, you know if you're an accountant, or a lawyer, you might not have a lot of great visual content, but you can post um, you can post helpful tips, stats, infographics, and so the content types might be about you with products, might be digital assets, ebooks, downloads, other things that's graphic, photos and videos, maybe pictures of your staff, videos and interviews. BusyWeb likes to post our busy webinars on Pinterest. And then useful and interesting content includes curated content, so maybe infographics you found elsewhere on the web, blog posts, and again, 
this is a great way to use your website and the website's auto post ability to automatically con publish that content. And then of course, quotes or tips. This is again where Canva comes in really handy. Let what you love be what you do. This was very easy to set up inside of this pin. You just slap a background on it, grab a funky font, and it automatically publishes it for you inside of Pinterest. If you're not familiar with Pinterest, by the way, all you need to do is set up your account, browse around, and click the pin it tool inside of your browser, and you install the tool on your browser, or you include a bookmarklet, which basically you go to your bookmarks and you select that bookmark that says pin it, and then it automatically pops up Pinterest. You can grab an image or a video off of a specific website, give it some context inside of the caption, link to your content, and use those keywords as much as possible inside of Pinterest to drive that traffic. Interestingly, Pinterest drives more traffic than LinkedIn and Twitter combined to websites. And it's probably smaller than both of those as far as the general size. So when you think about what to use Pinterest for, again, visually arresting stuff is, is key. You might want to do, you know, out of a out of a five time a day kind of thing, you know, one thing might be about you, another might be a digital asset, a guide or an ebook, maybe a curated pin, a blog post with tips, an inspirational quote, and more. Here's how others are using it. Unique ship sheep pins its products, they provide useful pins, they curate content, and they do how-to pins as well. Very helpful and very interesting. What do you do next? Well, create three to four boards on your business page. Again, business pages, searchable, personal pages not. If you go to business.pinterest.com, if you have a personal account that you've been using as a business, there's a one-click option to convert it to a business page. And with business pages, you get analytics, which you don't on your personal. You can install the Pinterest button, and here's a link, and then provide a description and a link in your product pins. So we know where we're at. Now here's where to go. Next steps. First, some etiquette. Bad things, not completing your page. Instead, fill out all the information about your business, add your logo, and add your photos. And make sure that your logo matches the needs of the format. It should be square and very recognizable from an itty bitty little space. Talk about, don't talk about yourself all the time. Instead, balance it with helpful and entertaining content. Don't post too little or too much. Be active, don't overdo it. And again, at least once a week is what you should be shooting for. Don't ignore your fans. Instead, say thank you and answer questions. Don't delete negative comments. Instead, be helpful and create a positive experience. The best thing to do if you, if you experience um, unhappy folks on social media is to engage, connect with them, and take it offline. Say, so sorry you're having that problem. So sorry you had that experience. Would love to send you a direct message and talk about this offline and let it dissolve from there. People just want to be heard. Don't forget to provide context and instead include a comment when sharing. And then my favorite little thing, Office Space is one of my favorite movies, and don't over hashtag. Hashtag if, hashtag you, hashtag could, hashtag stop, hashtag writing. You get the picture, it's annoying. Don't over hashtag. How do you know if social media is working? Well, engagement, if you get a lot of content and frequency that your audience wants, then look for that. If you get a lot of likes, shares, comments, retweets, repins, then you know that you're probably looking at, at, um, at that your things are working well. Inside of insights on all of these tools, you'll be able to see what posts that you make are having the biggest impact, what are getting most read, what are getting the most clicks, what are getting shared the most often. Do more of those. If you get more followers, it's going to be good. The key thing to know is that it all takes time. So then next, make sure that you just go do it. Choose the networks that are right for you. We talked about five today. You don't need to do all five. Pick one. If, you grow, if you're only going to pick one, I would go with Facebook because it's the biggest market. But then use those worksheets to help with content ideas. Again, if you would like those worksheets emailed to you, send a note to me at dave at busyweb.com, and I'll send you a link to the PDF download. And then try the next steps that we had suggested for each network. Keep track of your audience engagement. And before you know it, you're going to be off and running, and social media will be working for you. Skipping back over, um, Deb asked again, um, what do I mean by websites auto postability? And uh, Deb, it, it's possible, and the way BusyWeb builds our websites, we build websites so that when you publish on your website, when you click post on your website, 
you post to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, and Pinterest automatically, as well as integrating and interacting with people so that you reach out and it posts via email. So you have all of that content and it posts out simply and quickly and easily. Um, Deb, I noticed that you said that the sound, sound dropped out for you again. And just scroll back a little bit. It's probably a buffering issue on your browser. Um, we're, we're seeing uh, um, no service interruptions right now. So um, hopefully that'll be good. And then um, Deb, Deb Mullins said that you're a social media manager, so you're not sure if she should be using the business owner's photo and headers or more of a business logo. And the key, if you're the social media manager and you're posting for a company, is to post on the company page. You're not going to post as that person. If the brand is the person, you're gonna to wanna to be a little bit more careful with that and maybe tip on that, but you need to be very clear about who is posting when. So in particular on Twitter, sometimes people that have a lot of different people posting on their Twitter account, they'll just include their, um, their initials inside of the end of every, tw every tweet. And then in the About Us section of their Twitter account, they say, DM is Dave Meyer, um, JM is Jen Meyer, um, JM is Jessica, or whatever. And so you go out on that, and that's how you broadcast and reconnect. The key, that's what social media pages, business pages are for. So if you're the social media, that's the way you should do it. And then um, Deb said, yes, you do that from WordPress. That's the only type of businesses that we or that's the only type of websites that we create. So if you want to know more about that, actually, if you host with us, we activate social media auto posting for you, um, but we'd love to talk about that as well. Let's skip ahead and get into the details here on the final. Um, and we have a special offer for anyone on here today. If you're not a Constant Contact customer already, um, since this is a Constant Contact sponsored event, I can give you this deal. Um, if you start a Constant Contact account by clicking on busyweb.com cc and going through that link and starting it up, you'll get a free template design that's a $200 value as part of this. There are a couple of caveats if you already have a social or already have a constant contact account or if you are a free um, or not paying for constant contact inside of that, that's not possible, but we also have some other specials and offers. And if you visit busyweb.com slash cc, you'll see all that content. Constant contact is a brilliant tool, great for reaching the people that you're trying to connect with. In summary, remember that BusyWeb can help you with both online marketing and web development. If the social media auto-posting tool sounds interesting to you, we do WordPress web hosting, and we'd love to talk to you about that. And again, remember to join us every Wednesday because we cover social media topics every single week. I mentioned that yesterday we talked about Pinterest for business. The week before that, we talked about LinkedIn company and showcase pages. The week before that, we talked about Facebook ad demographics. And next Wednesday, we're going to talk about using Instagram for business. So if any of that makes sense or sounds like a good idea to you, go to busyweb.com slash events and either register if it's in the future or go ahead and check out the replay if it's in the past. Finally, if you would like more detail on how your website is working, go to busyweb.com slash buzz and fill out this quick three questions um, thing. What it's going to do, you enter in your website URL and a keyword that you think you should be found for and then your name and email. And then uh, if you're feeling extra saucy, you can enter in a competitor's URL. And this buzz report is going to tell you how well you're doing and what's working well for you and what you should be considering as a growth option. It's also going to give you a super handy checklist. It's a 10-page report that's free, and it takes about 45 minutes total for the buzz report to run. We're a little generous, and we say under two minutes, and you'll get it all done. Again, I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. Thank you all so very much for reaching out to us today. Here again is my contact information if you'd like to reach us. David BusyWeb, Facebook BusyWeb, um, at BusyWeb, or 612-4-BUSY-O, 424-9990. Again, I'm Dave Meyer with BusyWeb, reminding you that at BusyWeb, we help you generate buzz without getting stung. Talk to you next time. Thanks very much.